Hello, this is Dr. Jimmy, and I'm jumping right into part five immediately after I made part four. I don't know if I get both these videos up the same day or not, but this is part five of my history for Halloween Horror Nights 20, 20 years of fear. You know, this one, HHN double X. Kind of interesting. That was the first time they used in marketing and on billboards and adver advertisements, not Halloween Horror Nights, but just HHN, like they knew that people would call it that. Uh, you know the fans had always called it HHN, and now it became so so much a part of the of the it's moved into the mainstream, I guess, and people were calling it HHN. So, but HHN XX, uh, you know, that's uh, Halloween Horror Nights 20 20 years of fear. So, uh, in the previous video, I began talking about the houses at last, and I was talking about Hades Gates of Ruin as the first house, and I was left in the in the Hydra corridor talking about the only one head. So let's go on from that. So after that, <coughs> we go into, I believe next was the domain of the Minotaur, to use the proper British pronunciation. This is, of course, a big chap with a bull head, a big horny guy, and uh, he's usually in a labyrinth of some sort, and this was like that, it's sort of a mirror maze. There's a lot of mirrors in here, and you weren't quite sure where the Minotaur would be popping up next. Oh, there he is, he's over there, we're safe. No, that's a mirror, he's right behind you! Holy fuck! And so they got through the Minotaur's labyrinth, and then you're into the realm of the Stygian liches. You know, the in Greek they're called the Grae, the uh, three sisters who only have one eyeball between all three of them, also only one tooth. They don't usually use that, and they've popped up in various... Uh, you saw them in Clash of the Titans, you saw them in uh, Percy Jackson, where they were driving a taxi cab. God damn, a uh, stupid way of it. But here they're in hideous uh, crones. Uh, blind witches with one eye. So you meet them and they say sinister things to you, and you see a lot of, lot of evidence of people who are being punished for their sins here in Hades. You see some dismembered bodies hanging up and tortured victims hanging on things and, and even one naked female victim where you could were exposed breasts. That was unique. That was a new thing for Horror Nights. We never really saw that before and of course some people are forever 13 years old and when they saw that went boobies! That's inevitable I'm afraid. Unfortunately, the person I heard do that wasn't 13 for many decades, but there you go. Some people never get over that. Um, boobies, yeah. Boink, boink. You know, that sort of thing. Not too sexist, isn't it? Oh, well. And then you encountered the throne of Hades himself. Great big, ornate, horrible skeletal made out of bones and bits and you know really frightening big gigantic throne of doom where the dark lord would sit ruling over his domain except the dark lord wasn't sitting on his throne it was an empty throne and it was like why is there no hades in the house called hades what the you know why again maybe it was budgetary i don't know there were a lot of Jokes on the internet, people showing that with the putting a post-it note on it saying, you know, be back, you know, you know, BRB or something on there, or out for lunch or something, releasing the crack and be back later, whatever. Uh, there was like one where somebody, I think, actually put photoshopped, or maybe they actually put a plush of Pluto, the dog from Disney, on the throne and snapped a picture, or maybe they photoshopped it, and I don't know, but that was amusing because, of course, Pluto is the Roman name for Hades, so that was uh, part of that, uh, but he wasn't there. But he did see a lot of his Stygian guards, the Hadean uh, legions, who looked a lot like Talos in the Harryhausen movies, the tall Greek war, except they had tops, they didn't want bare chested, but they looked almost like living statues, or they are made out of bronze that was burnt, and they had helmets over their face, so you couldn't see their face, you know horrible Greek uh, demons, I guess, demon warriors, and they would be chasing you around till you exited the house. So that was pretty much it at the end. I mentioned budgetary concerns. There was one thing that we heard about later that was supposed to be in the house from the get-go and couldn't be done, apparently due to lack of budget. They reached a point where the budget, they hit their budget and they couldn't get more funds to do more, unfortunately, and that hurt a couple of the houses, this one in particular. They were supposed to be in this house. Cerberus, the three-headed dog who guards the underworld. Of course, we've 
They used that in Harry Potter where they had a three-headed dog uh, guarding an underground chamber. Something similar here in Greek mythology, of course, it's where it comes from, the iconic the archetype of a three-headed bow wow that guards the uh, Hades and uh, I don't know if it's going to be a puppet like the werewolves we saw later in, in later years or if it was meant to be an animatronic like they had in the thing uh, but whatever it was it was supposed to be this, this rather scary three-headed dog <coughs> coming at you three puppy heads um, but that was left out of the house so that was sad sad we didn't get to see the puppy Oh well, so that was the first house, Hades Gates of Ruin. So let's go on to the second house which shared Soundstage 22. And that second house is called Psychoscarapy Echoes of Shady Brook. Now, let's see, take a look at my notes. Yes. Now, <coughs> Perhaps the least original of all the originals in that it was a sequel to a previous franchise. The Psycho Scarepy franchise, of course, began in uh, Halloween Horror Nights 13 in 2003 with Psycho Scarepy, where we first were introduced to Shady Brook. Uh, then, of course, it came back in a rather big way in 2006, where they had uh, Psycho Scarepy Maximum Madness with a really beautiful facade of Shady Brook in a soundstage. Much you know, very beautiful, and that one, of course, was set when Jack the Clown had been an inmate there, and his influence over all the, the, other, the other patients, making them rather impatient and rather insane. Well, they were insane to begin with, but worse. <laughs> and, of course, it was also, uh, in 2007, uh, Psycho Scarpy, uh Home for the Holidays, which was the third house in that whole series, and that idea was that the patients got out and were terrorizing a little town somewhere in upstate New York, which also places the asylum in upstate New York, which is why I've always thought this is the asylum that Mary Agana had some connection to, which she talked about in her notebook, because her practice was in New York, as, of course, if she's been investigating by a Manhattan detective, obviously she was somewhere in the vicinity. So that was my... Uh, even though she's originally from Cary, Ohio, of course, we know that, but that's where she ended up in her practice. So that was, uh, that was psychoscarapy. And so this was the fourth psychoscarapy uh, house. And the idea for this was that it took place many, many, many years later than all the other ones, after Shady Brook had closed and the asylum itself had stood abandoned for many years and became decrepit and derelict. And children would say, oh, the place is haunted, and they go in and peek around. And so that was what was supposed to be, and it was, of course, haunted by the spirits of the departed doctors and patients who had died horribly in the, in the asylum, unless some of them might still be alive, lurking around for some reason, homeless. Uh, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of patients who were released in the early 1980s during the Reagan administration, and some of these people... Uh, ended up becoming homeless and some actually went back to old asylums and tried to move in uh, because that was the only home they knew. Perhaps there's a bit of that here, I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> creepy. So you go into the, uh, into the house and the facade is the same beautiful facade, the Art Deco structure of the Shady Brook Asylum, except now falling apart, derelict, you know, it's no longer the beautiful like it was when it was new when you saw it in Maximum Madness. Now, of course, it looks like it's in great disrepair and abandoned. There's grickle grass growing in the lawn. Uh, well, of course, it's not really grickle grass. That grows around the Wunstler's lair over in, uh, in another park, but it looked like grickle grass to me. I have to stop now. I'm getting a phony call I have to answer.